Out of My Mind, Chapter 15. The next morning, we get to the first, we get the first snowfall of the season. Big, fat flakes fall outside the windows of room age five. Freddy zooms over and touches the window. Nice, he says. Mrs. Shannon rolls all of us closer so we can watch the snow accumulate on the grass and trees. It's really pretty. Even Jill seems to relax. We going to play in the snow? asked Maria. No, Maria. It's too cold to play outside, but guess what? It's getting close to Christmas. Maria cheers. I've heard it's some sort of a tradition around here to decorate this old styrofoam snowman, Mrs. Shannon continues. She makes a face as she pulls Sidney's head out of his box. Maria starts to hug it, but Mrs. Shannon stops her and says, I believe in the smell of fresh pine trees at holiday time and real candy canes and popcorn garland. Tomorrow, I'm bringing in a real tree, and we're going to make it beautiful. Freddie and Carl slap palms. Maria looks disappointed for a moment, but she seems to forget about the snowman as Mrs. Shannon gives everyone a soft piece of chocolate candy. She wisely snuffs Sydney, stuffs Sydney back in his box. While Mrs. Shannon shows the rest of the class how to make paper snowflakes, Catherine and I sit together in front of the one clunky classroom computer and do web searches on the communication devices. It's so slow. Sometimes it gets jammed up and stalls, and we have to reboot it, reboot it and start all over. Room H5 always gets the big old leftover computers that the other classrooms no longer want. Catherine and I research all kinds of electronic talking and communication devices that have been designed for people like me. Lots of them seem as clunky and awkward as our home com- room computer. Some look really complicated. All of them are expensive, crazy expensive. Some of the websites don't even list the prices, like they're afraid to specify how much the thing costs. The devices that use standard computer keyboards wouldn't work. I'd have no way to hit the individual keys. I need something that would work with just my thumbs. We find adapted computers, talking boards that speak the words, push-button systems, and even devices that work with blinks or head nods. Finally, we find something called a meta-talker that looks like a possibility. It has spaces big enough for my thumbs to get into and millions of words and phrases built into it. I watch an online video of a boy about my age using one, and even though he clearly has no voice of his own, this little box lets him tell all the details of his recent birthday party. I get so excited that my legs start kicking and my arms start flailing, and I look like some kind of crazy human helicopter. Catherine prints out the information and tucks it into the book bag that is attached to the back of my chair. Good luck, Melody, she whispers, as she leaves for the day. When I get off the bus after school, Mrs. V is waiting for me as usual. I almost twist out of my seat trying to point to my bag to let her know I have something important in it. Hold your horses, Mrs. V says. Since when are you excited to do homework? What's got you all in a tizzy today? I just grin and kick. After my snack of caramel candy, first, and tuna melt last, and after Penny, who's just gotten up from her nap, eats her applesauce, Mrs. V finally pulls the papers out of my bag. Well, this is exactly what you need, Mrs. V says, slapping the printouts onto the table and reading them. No wonder you all fired up. Yes, 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 I point. Then I point to the individual words, talk to mom and dad. Talk, talk, talk. I'll do just that, just as soon as they get home from work, Melody, Mrs. V promises. I can hardly wait while Penny catches Cookie Monster, watches Cookie Monster gobble carrots instead of cookies on Sesame Street. I dream of talking, talking, talking. When Mom picks up Mrs. V, us up, Mrs. V, true to her word, not only shows Mom the printouts, but even has her computer ready, set to the web page where the MetaTalker is advertised. And sold. Penny sits on mom's lap and keeps pushing her computer keys, messing with the display, which is getting on my nerves. Mom watches the video that shows people actually talking and cracking jokes and even going to college by using that machine. Mrs. V explains to mom how this is exactly right for me. And mom, instead of being practical and sensible and thrifty like she usually is, seems to agree. 
Looks like insurance will cover about half the cost, she muses, as she investigates the website. Let me talk to Chuck. This is long overdue. Tonight, I ask for my board. Yep, tonight, Mom says, giving me a squeeze. But nothing happens right away in the world. Mom fills out the online application for the machine the next day and sends it in. I wait. Then we have to ask my doctor to fax in a prescription. I've heard of prescriptions for antibiotics, but not for machines. That seems crazy. Who'd ever want this machine unless they needed it? I wait. Next, we have to get approval from our insurance company. More paperwork and phone calls. More questions and answers. I wait. A parental financial statement has to be turned in. You gotta be kidding. Why do they make it so complicated? I wait. The medical form is missing one signature and has to be resubmitted. I wait. One last approval form from a school official has to be turned in. I wait. I realize I've been waiting for this thing all my life. Finally, 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 on the Wednesday before Christmas, the meta talker arrives. I need no other gift. When I get home from school, Mrs. B tells me that she hurried to my house when she saw the upstruck pulling in our driveway. She signed for the package and brought it to her house for safekeeping. The huge brown box sits there, taped and secure, and it is addressed to me. I wiggle and squeal and insist we open it right away. I can feel one of my tornadoes coming on. Spastic city, here I come. Calm down, Melly Yellow, Mrs. V says, placing a hand on my shoulder. But I can't relax. Open, 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 I tap. Well, your mom knew you'd be impatient, Mrs. V says. So when I called her to say, to say it, arrived, she told me it was okay for us to open it. I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack watching Mrs. V carefully open the edges of the box. She lets me pull at the brown paper inside. Then, under about a mile of bubble wrap, there it is, the meta talker. Smaller than I expected. It's only the size of my wheelchair tray, but it's sleek and shiny and cool to the touch. It's like a butterfly ready to unfold its wings. And boy, oh boy, I can't wait to try it. Mrs. V plugs it into the wall outlet to charge the battery, then plugs, then pulls out the huge booklet of directions. Woo, she says. This will take about a year to read and understand. She flops down in a soft, easy chair with Penny on her lap and begins to read. And I begin to wait and wait and wait. Finally, I just know I'm going to explode. I wheel over to the table where the Medi Talker sits. I've seen the kids at school play video games they've never seen before. And I've seen the program them program their phones and computers without touching a book or instructions. So I take my right thumb and push on the button. The board whirls and glows, and then a welcome message appears on the screen. I push another button, and a voice that sounds like an Englishman with a really bad head cold blurts out, Welcome to Meditalka. Mrs. V jumps up from the couch. I shriek with joy. It looks like you're way ahead of me, Melody. Not that I'm surprised. She sets Penny down. Now, let's see if what this machine can do. I feel like Christopher Columbus bumping into America. It had been there all the time, but he was the first one from his world to find it. I wonder if his heart had beat as fast as mine is. We quickly discover that the MetaTalker has more than a dozen levels, all easily reached with just one button. So we'll on level one, we program the names of everyone. I know. My name, all the members of my family, kids and teachers at school, my doctors, the neighbors, my friends, from parents, and of course, Mrs. V on the second level. She insists we all add the vocabulary words we've been collecting on our own on our microcolored three by five inch flashcards. Type save, type save. Mrs. V's fingers. Fly as she keeps adding words for me. Lots of our vocabulary words are already in the machine's memory, but she gives me more. More, more. Nouns, verbs, adverbs, and adjectives, thousands of them, as well as cool sentence maker that is isolated on another level. We can prepare hundreds of phrases and sentences and get them, get to them with just a touch. Have you heard the la latest song? That's what's up. How did you do on the spelling test? 
Ordinary words, normal conversation. I've never had that. Awesome. Another level for numbers and even communication, computation. I'll be able to do math now. Maybe I won't tell the teachers about this one. And there's a level full of corny jokes and silly sayings with room left for us to add more. Another level plays music. I can connect the device to a computer and download any song I want. I can't wait to search iTunes. Maybe I can ask Rose which songs are hot. Rose, I can actually talk to Rose now. We stopped programming after a while. Penny needs to be changed and kept occupied. But I'm much too excited to rest. So after Mrs. B gets Penny set up with her dollhouse at the foot of the couch, we add even more words and phrases. Finally, she stops typing and says, would you like to try it? The room is absolutely quiet. I stroke the edge of the machine softly, then push two buttons. Thanks, Mrs. V, the computer voice says. She blinks real fast. I do too. She reaches for a tissue. We both need it. Mrs. V tucks the tissue into her pocket and then begins reading again from the instruction manual. Manual. Hey, listen to this, she says. With that connector cord, you can also save longer things you want to write, like stories or poems, on the computer. Wow, the machine says. Mrs. V nods in agreement. This is going to be fun, but you're going to need lots of patience to make it say what you want, kid. She's right. Many levels have been left blank for users to input their own information. Words, sentences, phone numbers, even pictures. Information can be typed directly into the machine or it can be downloaded from a computer. It's a little overwhelming. We can design this to fit you, Melody, Mrs. V tells me. This will be your world. So let's take our time and make it exactly what you need. I'm so happy. I almost feel like hugging the machine, but that would look silly. Instead, I name it. That's probably pretty dumb, but sometimes it's good to have something that nobody else knows but you. I'm not going to type the name into the machine because it's personal, but in my mind, I'm going to call the meta talker Elvira after the song I like. Yep, my heart's on fire for Elvira. While Mrs. B plays with Penny for a while, I continue to explore what Elvira can do. One of the first changes I want to make is the hello message and the voice that speaks it. The computer produced reading sounds really fake, but the machine offers several female voices to choose from, as well as a bunch of different languages. I picked the voice called Trish. She actually sounds like a girl, not a grown up. I wouldn't mind sounding like her if I could talk. Bienvenue, Trish says in French. I know that means welcome, but the button for German, I push the button for German, and she says, Willkommen. I even find something that sounds like Funying when I touch the button for Chinese. I stop for a minute and stare at the board. It has never occurred to me that there are kids like me in Germany, China, and France who need a machine to help them talk. Mechanical sounding. Welcome to Mel Meta Talker, Patricia's voice saying, Hi, I'm Melody. Talk to me. I can't wait to take it to school and introduce my new computer to everyone. I wonder what Rose will say. By now, both mom and dad have called to check on how we're doing and how much progress we've made. They're both anxious to get here and see the device for themselves. So while we wait, Miss Fee suggests that we just keep programming, programming it adding more and more. She thinks I should practice using it for a couple of weeks before taking it to school. I don't really want to wait, but I have to agree with her that this is going to take some time. I want to be able to use the system to talk like ordinary kids, sort of. So we return to words. I want to input thousands of them. Notebook, marker, homework, assignment, test, Positive, negative, fingernail, nail polish, outfit, backpack, purse, scared, excited, purple. Then we type in more phrases, hundreds of them, to the mall from a distance in the middle of, as a result, the reason why. Lastly, we go get some sentences, dozens of them. What time is it? What's up with that? You crack me up. I'm so excited. Before the doorbell rings. When dad and mom come in to pick us up, dad is ready with his camcorder. His hands are shaking a little. Show us how it works, honey, he says. I can't believe Dad is making a video of me 
saying my first word. It's almost like when he filmed Penny's first words. Well, not really. I typed very carefully and pushed the button to make the machine speak. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. I'm so happy. Mom gets all teary-eyed and her nose gets red. She's looking at me all soft and gooey. When I think about it, I realize I've never, ever said any words directly to my parents. I push a couple of buttons and the machine speaks the words I've never been able to say. I love you. Mom completely loses it. She bubbles up with tears and grabs Dad. I think he might be sniffing back a couple of tears himself. But he has recorded it all.